السلام علیکم خواتین و حضرات ویلکم ٹو لیکچر نمبر فائیو برانڈ مینجمنٹ ایم کے ٹی سکس ٹو فور وی بن ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ برانڈ پاور برانڈ اٹریکشن برانڈ ویلیو ان دا لاسٹ لیکچر اینڈ وٹ ایور وی ٹاکڈ اباؤٹ برانڈ برانڈ مینجمنٹ بفور دیٹ آلسو بال ڈاؤن ٹو ود ون فیکٹ دیٹ برانڈس آر ویری پاورفل برانڈس کین بی ویری ویلیوبل اینڈ برانڈس ہیو لاٹ آف اٹریکشن But this doesn't mean that the world of brands is full of power and full of value and attraction. That world is full of threats also. Brands face a lot of threats and run into situations which are very challenging due to competitive factors. The most fundamental determinant of uh, brands facing challenging situations is market maturity. Market matures because of intense competition, because of having a lot of players in the marketplace, category expanding and blowing, and not responding to the supply situation, or not replying to all that factories or manufacturers can produce, the market can't take all that. This also means that growth of the category you are operating in saturates. It doesn't go beyond a certain point and the growth which has been taking place over the last years, like see, it may be 5% to 10% or maybe more than that, that is not taking place anymore. And the increment of growth which has been offering attraction to different players is no longer there. It also means that consumer buying has hit a plateau which implies that purchases are not going beyond a certain point. What this means is that the discretionary or disposable income which consumers have at their disposal to buy consumer items, for example, has reached a certain ceiling beyond which they do not really want to spend. Consumers always spend their income disposable income in a certain pattern of frequency. Meaning, for example, if you buy certain consumer goods like once in two weeks, you have that set pattern to follow. And when the category saturates, it means that collectively all the consumers are very rigidly following their respective patterns of uh, frequency of buying beyond which they are not going and the growth is not coming. When that happens, the classic response of brand managers and marketing people is to make competition even more intense by creating more brands because they think they need to have more brands in order to have a broader appeal among different segments. And like I was talking earlier, they think on the lines of creating appeal which goes across segments. And if they really succeed in creating something which has kind of a cross-segmental appeal, nothing like it, but generally it doesn't happen that way. Generally, brands run into a more competitive and a more difficult warlike situation. Competitive wars start off and uh, everyone Everyone is out there to snatch the share the other one has. I would like to explain this concept uh, with the help of uh, a graphical presentation. Let's take a look at uh, the screen. Um, as we can see from um, uh, this screen, we have uh, five different brands. It is a hypothetical situation from brand A to brand E. Brand A is the market leader with 40% market share and then 25% brand B and 15, 10, 10. That's all hypothetical. What I was talking about, the category not expanding any further and consumer purchases not going beyond a certain point. What I meant was that the slide which you can see, what I was talking about in reference to category not expanding any further 
and consumer buying hitting a ceiling. What I meant was that this screen that you're seeing, which comprises of five different brands, it is not becoming bigger. When this does not become bigger, it means whatever growth has to come to different brands, it has to come from each other. There is no incremental growth. The size of the pie is not increasing. If the size of the pie is increasing, it can be expressed in uh, the following words. If this pie consists of like 100 units, which is the total segment you are operating in, and if this becomes bigger, it means it maybe is 110 units or maybe even more. When it is not increasing, it is staying at 100. And when it is staying at 100, all brands have to snatch share from each other in order to grow, in order to have a bigger share of the market because overall buy is not increasing. So that's what I meant by category not increasing, hitting a plateau, and consumer purchases reaching a ceiling point. And the classic response to this situation is more competition. And more competition comes in the form of more brands. You can well imagine, if you refer to uh, the screen I was talking about, I was showing you, uh, five brands, and just imagine if this consists of like you know, seven brands or even 10 brands, what's gonna happen then? The market shares are going to be even more divided and subdivided, which makes things even more difficult. Under such circumstances, what happens is brands proliferate. There's a tremendous growth. That's one of the consequences which take place as a result of the decisions taken by the brand managers to introduce more brands. Other factors which uh, pose challenges in this kind of situation are consumer revolt, management pressures, retailer power, and media fragmentation. We shall talk about these points one by one, but first of all, brand proliferation. Like I said, this happens um, as a response to category getting mature. Different players come out with different brands. If you had you know, five brands earlier, maybe now you have 10 brands. When that happens, it makes your buying process a little more complicated. You go to the marketplace, take a look at the retail shelf, and find more brands than you are used to looking, looking at. You are a little perplexed, a little confused what to do and what not to. You start, as, you start thinking as a consumer that all the products which appear on the shelf, all of a sudden, they all have differentiated features. But you've got to convince yourself. And here, that mechanism gets set into your mind uh, whether you should try it or not. The awareness is created because you're looking at those different new entries, but you are not very knowledgeable of the benefits and features they offer you. And generally what happens at the end of your thought process is that you go back to your original brand and you stick to the preference that you had. You still exercise that preference and end up buying the brand which you have been buying before. Because you are a little confused. So the net effect of brand proliferation is, although competition becomes very intense, uh, the preferences stay the way you know, they have been, and new entries generally are not in a position to snatch as much share as brand managers thought they would. This is not to say that they do not gain any share of the market. They do create some dents here and there, but they may not create the very heavy dents into the sales of those brands which are very established and which are powerful and which are, which are valuable. But they do create problems. 
problems in the sense that established brands have to invest more in the market. They have to uh, get to put in more efforts in order to sustain the brands. And whatever they've been doing to maintain those, they have to intensify their efforts and activities, which means more money and more time. So this is the, one of the challenges which uh, is posed to uh, powerful and valuable brands. And I would say it once again, um, do not take me wrong when I say uh, that new entries um, cannot really affect the sales of the existing brands. They do, but to a certain extent. Uh, what they also do, uh, they create some problems for consumers to make decisions. So when consumers see differentiation taking place not in a very meaningful way and uh, you know, products proliferating not with uh, the very meaningful features, they become kind of uh, irritated and uh, they think that their buying process uh, has been unnecessarily made complex. So this is one of the challenges uh, that the brands face. Um, and, and no brand, however powerful it is, is immune from this kind of a challenge. The second challenge which brands face in the marketplace is uh, consumer revolt. And this challenge is an extension of the first one, which I talked earlier, brand proliferation. Brands proliferate uh, as a result of uh, uh, the pressures with which uh, the brand managers could feel upon themselves uh, because of the category uh, not expanding anymore. Um, and the reason I say this is an extension uh, because uh, consumers uh, do not really uh, feel that uh, the differentiated features uh, with which uh, uh, the new brand entries offer are very meaningful. So it is the trivial differentiation which really puts off uh, consumers. Uh, in many of the cases, like I said earlier, they feel that their the buying process has been unduly made complex and uh, they don't really have to look at, um, uh, they don't really have to consider uh, the new entries and therefore they will rather uh, stick to their um, own brands. If they try new brands, it means they are cutting into somebody's sales. And there are situations where new entries do attract consumers. Uh, but generally, uh, what happens is that uh, consumers look upon the uh, uh, differentiating uh, features uh, as offered by the new entries as trivial. The reason is that new innovations are not really easy to come by. And uh, it is not very frequent that meaningful innovations take place. And uh, under those circumstances, there is not much in which you really can do in order to add uh, real, meaningful, extra, uh, additional benefits uh, to the product. Therefore, uh, consumers uh, get a little upset and uh, uh, reject that trivial uh, differentiation. Talking uh, a little more in detail about uh, the, the triviality of uh, these uh, the differentiating uh, the features, I say differentiating features because uh, the brand managers or marketing people think that they really have offered something which, is, uh, which, which does carry a point of difference, but in actuality it may not. The distinction may appear in terms of uh, the package, uh, but the real differentiation in terms of the content may not be there. Uh, to give you one example, there are many uh, products on the market which you will see uh, saying on top of the package, uh, new. Um, and you see the kind of a slanting or uh, a diagonal, I mean, the kind of a violator as uh, the marketing people call. Uh, the reason they call it violator because it violates uh, intentionally uh, the brand name or something important on the brand and one corner uh, looks kind of you know, truncated or kind of covered under that violator. And that violator, mostly in yellow color, says new. You start wondering and thinking to yourself, what is so new about the product? If you reject it, the product has not done justice to itself. If you try it, it has created difficulties for other brands. Because naturally, if it wasn't there, 
you would have bought something else. So this is uh, one of uh, the challenges which brands face in the market. But mostly, mostly, uh, what happens is um, that consumers feel kind of put off and uh, they revert back to the brands they have been buying. Nevertheless, the challenge is there. Such situations leave irritated consumers who think that the buying process has been made complex unnecessarily. Kham kha ek taklif mehsoos hoti hai unko aur wo samajhte hain ki jo nayi entries market mein aayi hain differentiation jo hai wo maani khais nahi hai aur sawai iske ke rang dhang uske thode tabdeel kar diye gaye hain features wahi mehsoos hote hain to wo ya to apna wahi brand jo hamesha se khareed rahe hain use khareedte hain aur agar farz kare wo naya khareed bhi lete hain to jo existing brands hain unke waaste problem hai so kehne ka matlab ye hai ki whatever the situation is whether a powerful brand uh, keeps selling or a new brand makes things difficult with the for the powerful brand uh, brands um, are under uh, threats because uh, uh, it is the same brand managers and it is the same players you know who are managing all those brands and uh, everyone is uh, facing uh, the brunt of the situation uh, somewhere along the line this kind of a situation leads to a lot of pressures on brand managers the biggest pressure they feel is from the top management and that pressure is about either losing sales or losing profitability and brand managers start scratching their heads what to do next this is a tremendous challenge and under these circumstances generally the response of uh, the marketing people is to start promoting brands and when i say promoting brands what i mean is they kick off some promotional schemes as they call those in the marketplace promotions are short term incentives offered to consumers and retailers to boost sales and since now they are short term they do not really address the long term goals of the company and promotions are carried out always at the expense of profitability you must have noticed in the market and you must have bought you know many a time uh, products which are on promotions like buy one get one free or buy one get 25% off now that 25% off or that free item which you are getting by just buying one comes to you at the cost of uh, the company uh, the company has to pay for that so this is a tremendous pressure under which brand managers and all marketers can find themselves this compromises financial performance and long term goals and having said that it becomes obvious that this is a tremendous challenge to the for the brand managers and this takes us into another um, challenging area uh, which we call retailer power retailers love promotions and you can guess why because they can sell more and they can make more money when you offer promotions like buy one get one free retailer does not have to contribute to what that cost and a retailer never will it's the company that faces that situation and that bears all the costs but retailer feels very comfortable because you know, he can attract many more consumers and getting a temporary boost for the product to sell retailers like i said can make a little bit of more money and also knowing that managers uh, from the companies are under pressure because they have uh, launched these promotional campaigns and if they have launched promotional campaigns naturally it is in response to certain pressures they try to bring managers under more pressure because they know they are more vulnerable and more susceptible at this point in time 
So they keep talking about more and more promotions. And they keep frightening the managers by saying, if you take this promotional um, incentive off, it's going to uh, bring the whole thing to a grinding halt, which may not be the situation, or which may be the situation to a certain extent, because whenever you take that off, uh, sales will slow down, uh, because uh, consumers are not getting that uh, free item anymore, they're not getting that 25% anymore. Uh, so this is kind of a predicament, and um, uh, this is a dilemma um, in which okay, the managers find themselves, uh, they went to launch these kind of promotions, and once you know, they have launched the, these promotions, uh, they went to uh, say goodbye to those promotions. So this is a, a very, very serious challenge that which is faced by uh, the managers to the once in a while. Uh, another challenging area for uh, all the brands is uh, the, uh, the media fragmentation and uh, increasing costs. Uh, media fragmentation has come into being in response to growing information technology. Uh, you know the number of television channels that we used to have in our market like you know, a decade ago. And uh, uh, if I give you um, the example of like, you know, more than two decades ago, uh, we used to have you know, just one television channel in uh, our country. And today we have maybe 70 or 80 channels, so maybe more. So the brand managers have got to be very, very media savvy, and they've got to be very careful in choosing um, the channels or the media to use for um, kicking off the communication campaigns. Um, gone are the days um, when we used to have uh, the one integrated campaign uh, which will go through uh, the one integrated media and do the trick for the companies. Uh, today, you have to decide uh, which are the channels that are suitable uh, to your the company because um, those are the channels, those should be the channels which carry an appeal for the target market you are trying to reach. Um, so uh, media fragmentation is a very important challenge about which the brand managers have got to be very, very knowledgeable. If you are not really uh, choosy about uh, which uh, the channels to use, uh, you can end up incurring a lot more cost. Uh, just imagine uh, kicking off your campaign through mm, two television channels as compared to all the 80 or 90 channels that we have in the country. Can you afford to make that, that kind of a mistake? I don't think you can. So the answer is no. Uh, these are uh, some of the challenges which, uh, and I would say some of the external challenges which brands face nowadays, uh, however powerful and valuable and attractive they may be. Uh, the vulnerabilities and the susceptibilities are there, so the brand managers have got to be very careful and very knowledgeable as to uh, how to face those challenges. And uh, they've got to be proactive uh, in terms of gauging that they are now just about to get into a challenging situation and instead of showing a reaction to that challenging situation, they should uh, carry out certain uh, proactions and they should, they should try to preempt uh, those challenging situations. Uh, the chances are um, even if they cannot avert those uh, upcoming situations to the 100%, they might be in a situation uh, to minimize the impact of uh, the emerging challenges. With this, uh, we are done with the external challenges which the brands face in the marketplace. And uh, after having talked about that, I would like to talk about one more challenge which is very internal and which brands face. Uh, that is the challenge of changing brand managers. Uh, when I say that, what I mean is uh, brand managers being uh, ambitious, uh, young people, uh, they change uh, their uh, the platforms at times uh, too frequently. Um, today, you know, this company, tomorrow that company, and uh, the companies run into those uh, the challenging situations because they cannot maintain the consistency 
uh, which uh, was created by one manager and uh, it crops up, crops up a situation where uh, companies do not find themselves uh, to transit in a seamless way but when they have another manager doing the same job. You can well imagine the um, understanding that you have with the advertising agency, uh, the understanding which you have with your peers within the company, and uh, you have been part of the history, whatever short history the brand may have, or the brand may have in relation to your existence in the company, um, the situation becomes very challenging when there is a change of management. Uh, so that is another challenge which uh, the companies can have to face and uh, that makes the job of the top managers, in particular the marketing manager, um, well if the marketing manager is very consistent, um, a little difficult because uh, the challenge of maintaining that consistency falls in the domain of the superiors who have to see to it that the transition uh, from one era of one brand manager to the era of uh, the new brand manager uh, who's just starting off takes place in a very seamless uh, and consistent way. Having said all that, uh, that we are now done with uh, the brand challenges and uh, not only that we are done with uh, brand challenges, we are done with uh, all the um, building uh, blocks, the macro building blocks that we started talking in the very first lecture up to this point uh, just in order to have a very uh, good, uh, good macro understanding uh, for developing a uh, strategic uh, good brand management process or a brand management model. To have an understanding of uh, the brand management model, uh, I'm going to uh, refer to uh, the book by uh, Scott Davis, uh, which I referred to as uh, the basic uh, the textbook for the course. And uh, in order to maintain consistency of tutorial, I'm going to now talk about uh, all the uh, concepts, the chapter by chapter, uh, but nevertheless the handouts which you are going to get are going to be a combination of so many different materials also. Uh, but my point is to uh, let you know that uh, if you can lay your hands on that book, um, it, it's going to be good for you. Uh, the understanding about the model is going to be developed from the point of view of your uh, developing yourself into a brand manager. Uh, just think for a while that you are a brand manager who is going to develop a new brand or a brand manager who is responsible for maintaining an existing brand. Uh, you have to have a very clear understanding of how the model works. Uh, starting uh, with uh, how to envision a new uh, the product which is to be turned into a brand and then going through all the phases um, up to uh, the stage where it becomes a very well established uh, brand in the marketplace. So first of all, uh, we can say that a brand manager has got to have um, a vision of um, uh, the, the brand and the vision relates to uh, the future and all the future courses of movements um, of your brand uh, in relation to, uh, for example, market share, in relation to markets to serve, um, in relation to uh, distribution improvements, in relation to uh, the quality improvements which you envision uh, that should come uh, to your brand uh, as the years could pass by and uh, in relation to um, technological uh, improvements uh, which should come to the brand um, with uh, the passage of time. Uh, meaning product innovations which you think you know, should come by um, and those product innovations are very much related to the quality parameters which uh, you envision and I talked about earlier. Uh, so these are uh, the kind of future courses of uh, the movements which you should have um, a picture of uh, in your mind uh, because only then you can have the right vision uh, where to start and where to go. So in other words, you have got to be very clear about the destination which the brand is going to hit.
and uh, it's a long journey. All the, uh, the points, uh, the transit points uh, on the path uh, to the destination have got to be cleared in your mind in order to have a very clear vision. With this strategic vision for the brand, uh, how do you uh, go ahead with the, uh, with the, with the future courses of uh, movement or uh, the future courses of actions? Um, it is uh, a very heavyweight strategic question. Uh, management, meaning the top management, have a vision for the company in terms of overall business. You as brand manager have a vision for the brand. And under those circumstances, the vision that you have for the brand should fit into the vision of the top management that they have for the overall business. And you can take it for granted and you can assume it to see it very, very confidently that top management does have uh, a vision and they are quite very clear about uh, the courses of actions that they should be taking in order to take the company from point A to point Z. And uh, the beauty of that strategic uh, process is uh, whatever uh, is going to be a part of that has to fit into that just like different cogs of the wheel fit into the wheel and make it moving. Having said that, it becomes obvious that brand vision is an extension of the overall business vision. The top management has the vision for the overall business and you as brand manager has vision for the brand. Brand vision is all about brand future brand growth and brand destination. And since earnings and cash flows and profitability all are function of the brand movement, therefore brand vision statement as part of the strategic management process takes on an added importance. It is the most important statement that we have to make before we start the process. It is the brand that is going to help a company to achieve its goals, short term and long term, both financial and strategic. Uh, there's a difference between financial goals and strategic goals, although financial goals also are very strategic. But uh, just for uh, the sake of understanding, I would explain these things to you uh, within this lecture, I think. Uh, financial goals are going to deal with numbers uh, that we have to achieve through uh, the movement of the brand and strategic goals are going to relate to the uh, qualitative market things like um, what kind of market we're going to cover and how much coverage we want, uh, what kind of improvement we need in market shares, so on and so forth. Well, we should be talking about all these things as the lecture goes on. The brand vision, therefore, is the starting point of the strategic management process. And before we start talking about how to build the model specifically relating to uh, the brand management, we've got to have a very clear understanding of the overall strategic management process, meaning the process which is uh, set in motion by the company for the overall business. And since brand management is part of that, uh, we have to uh, talk about it later before developing an understanding for the overall model. Strategic management process consists of five different stages. We can break down you know, these stages into six or seven but um, primarily, I would say there are five stages. Number one stage is developing the overall vision for the business, which I talked about already. Uh, the second stage is 
that you translate that vision into objectives. And uh, when you translate into objectives, it automatically means that you have to quantify whatever you envision in terms of uh, the brand movement. You have to have numbers in place, and we should talk about that. Third stage is that based on the objectives that we have set to ourselves, that we have to craft an overall strategy, meaning a business strategy. This business strategy is a combination of so many different associated strategies, like you have a financial strategy, I mean how to raise money. You have to have a marketing strategy, and part of the marketing strategy is the brand management strategy. You have communication strategy, you have uh, you know, packaging strategy, you have a promotional strategy. So there's, it's just a set of so many different strategies. Any uh, move that you're going to make can be uh, crafted into a strategy. And here, I would like to give you, in very plain, straight words, the definition of a strategy. Strategy, in simple words, is a game plan uh, to reach a certain destination. You have envisioned that destination, and then you have to have a game plan to reach there. How you reach there, uh, how you execute your moves to reach there, is what you call execution. And execution is tactics. So difference between strategy and tactics is very clear. Uh, once we understand that strategy is the overall game plan and tactics are execution, executional uh, framework. After we have crafted the strategy, uh, we are out there to implement the strategy because uh, unless that we execute what we have crafted, uh, we cannot get results. And uh, the execution in itself uh, is a very important area um, and uh, in present day's world there are experts who have written books and who are claiming that execution uh, has become even more important than crafting a strategy because crafting a strategy is something uh, for which you can seek outside help also but not for execution. Execution has got to be uh, taken care of by the management of the company, uh, people like you. So after execution has taken place, meaning after all the strategies are implemented, they are in place, uh, the stage is set for evaluating whatever is implemented. And you evaluate all the um, achievements that are there as a result of the working of uh, all the divisions and the subdivisions of the company. The results that are achieved uh, those are good and the results which are not achieved you have to look for the fixes as to how to uh, make them work. Uh, maybe you have to change your strategy, you have to change your tactics and uh, you have to devise a new course altogether. So whatever uh, corrective actions are to be taken uh, they are uh, based upon this stage which is the evaluation of what has been implemented. As we can see from the slide, the, the management process, the strategic management process consists of uh, uh, five different stages. Uh, first of all, we have um, uh, uh, the brand vision and uh, the brand vision is all about uh, what we have talked about and we should be talking about that uh, even uh, in more detail. Uh, the second step in the, the management process, as you can see from the screen, is um, uh, setting objectives. As you can see from the slide, uh, the strategic management process has five different steps. Um, step number one deals with business vision. Uh, we have talked a little bit about business vision um, in terms of um, it providing us the picture uh, about the destination which the company wants to hit and uh, what is it that is between uh, today and that destination. So that falls uh, within, the, um, within the visionary area, so to say. Uh, the second step is uh, setting objectives. But once you are very clear about the vision, you have to translate uh, your uh, the vision into uh, some, some quantitative numbers uh, because you have to achieve those objectives. Uh, after those objectives are set, uh, you are concerned about 
how to achieve those. Uh, you need certain resources at your disposal to start working on those in order to achieve those. So here is the stage, uh, which is stage number three, and that is crafting a strategy. Strategy means business strategy, and business strategy is a combination of overall strategies, um, which are so many. Uh, get all the actions get which you think you should be undertaking in order to reach the destination can be uh, classified into different categories. Uh, you have, you know, got so many different marketing marketing strategies like advertising strategy, you know, a packaging strategy, uh, got a promotional communication strategy, um, and similarly you have financial strategy, whether you have uh, human resource strategy uh, because you need people uh, who really can deliver uh, the goods. Uh, so business strategy is a combination of so many different uh, strategies. And uh, the once you, know, you have crafted uh, all those strategies, uh, you are into the next stage, which deals with implementing those strategies. Implementation, of course, uh, is all about execution. Execution has taken on added dimension uh, in today's management. It has become very significant. There are uh, management experts who think that execution is even more important than crafting a strategy. But maybe this is an overstatement, but what it means is that crafting a strategy is uh, relatively less difficult because you can seek outside help. Uh, you hire consultants, you consult them, and uh, you can have uh, so many different strategies in place. But when it comes to execution, uh, implement, implementation stage, it is the job of the management team uh, of the company that has to do all that. So it takes your best to, to be able to execute all that uh, you have crafted. Once you have implemented uh, your strategies, the last stage or the last step number five is evaluation of all that you have implemented. Uh, you've got to see uh, what is it that you have achieved and what is it that you have not achieved. What you have not achieved uh, has got to be uh, dissected so that the right corrective action can be taken uh, to fix that. Um, if there is um, a need for having a new strategy in place, you should do that. If there's a need for bringing about some technical changes within the strategic framework, uh, you should uh, handle that. And uh, if there is uh, there's something wrong with uh, the execution process only because uh, you're short of good people or you're short of resources, you've got to take all those corrective actions to be able to evaluate all that has been implemented so that all the goals and objectives can be fulfilled, if not 100%, um, say very close to it. So at the very start of uh, the strategic management process, there are some very vital questions which managers could have to ask themselves uh, before the process uh, goes to the further down the line. And those questions are uh, where we are today and where we really want to reach. Uh, what is going to be the shape of the business in times to come? And times you already have defined, with maybe five years down the line, or less than that, three years down the line. Nowadays, the business plans are made for a period of three years. Uh, five years is uh, a bit too long, and 10 years even longer. Uh, but when it comes to vision, there is no harm talking about five years down the lane or 10 years down the lane. When it comes to setting objectives, it is about three year time frame, which is uh, more practical and prudent than a five year time frame. I was talking about uh, uh, the questions the wage managers should ask themselves the, before the process can be uh, the further set into uh, the purposeful motion. And uh, the next question they should ask themselves, uh, what are the business areas that are going to be uh, in times to come? In the next three years, for example, if you're dealing with a three-year plan, uh, what are the markets you're going to cover? And uh, what are the product areas you're going to cover? Maybe you're going to get into uh, the more product lines, and uh, uh, what are going to be the geographic areas uh, that you're going to 
uh, expand your uh, the presence into and um, what are the kind of uh, human resources you need uh, to improve your I mean, the organization structure that is really compatible with the changes which you envision today. So these are a few very fundamental questions which you have to answer. And to be able to answer all those questions, the managers could have to carry out a very careful analysis of where the company would be um, in, in, in the next three years or five years. And uh, I already have talked about uh, the answers in relation to the questions when I was talking about those questions. The kind of areas you want to get into, the businesses you want to get into, and the growth you know, which you want to achieve. Um, and uh, the brands you know, which you want to introduce, or in case you, know, you want to extend the present brand, what are going to be the extensions? and uh, what should be the number of markets you should be present? Uh, these are the kind of answers which you should uh, have in place um, to all the questions which are very strategic in nature and which form uh, the framework for this strategic management process. Uh, this naturally uh, brings us to, to the next stage. But before we start talking about the next stage, there is one more important element in between, and that is what we call company's mission. Uh, there's a difference between a company's vision and company's mission. Uh, the difference is uh, not very difficult. It is subtle. Uh, vision, as you have uh, understood very clearly, I hope, and I'm confident, uh, the vision deals with future. That this is where we are today, and this is where we want to reach. Mission is what is it that we have to do today in order to fulfill the purpose of the organization. In the meaning, we have to achieve what we have at hand today so that we can move, move uh, toward tomorrow. So the mission is present oriented, and vision is future oriented. Uh, mission deals with the resources which you have uh, at work, which you have deployed, and mission deals with the markets which you already are serving. Mission deals with the human resource which you already have in place, um, and the mission deals with all those variables which are, um, which are at work. Um, so having understood the difference between vision and mission, I should also talk about uh, the values which all the companies have uh, in order to make the vision and the mission of the company very purposeful uh, toward attainment of all the objectives. Uh, what those values are, uh, because those are the fundamentals for the achievement of your objectives, I shall be talking about those in the next lecture I would like to wrap up whatever I have talked today in relation to um, uh, the brand challenges, uh, which was the, the, the part of the overview I was giving to you uh, toward uh, the macro building blocks. And um, I started uh, talking about, um, in this very lecture, uh, the uh, strategic management process in relation to uh, the brand management uh, development process. And uh, we are right now in the process of developing an understanding toward the overall with the business management process, which is going to lead us into understanding the brand management model. Thank you very much. I look forward to talking to you in the next lecture for the office.